Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for the reading of the scripture. Please pray with me. Father, help us as we read the scripture together. Come bring your understanding and reveal your truth. Come open our minds, hearts, and souls to all these words of life offer us. We long to be continually challenged, transformed, and renewed by your word. May we hear your voice of life as we read and draw close to you. Amen. Our scripture this morning is Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Lord, give us your spirit today as we hear your word proclaimed. Give me your spirit that I might speak a word to your people and give all a spirit of listening and receptiveness. Amen. Who here is familiar with shapewear, often referred to by its popular brand name, Spanx? Yeah, I'm not surprised who has raised their hand. Shapewear is basically extremely tight undergarments, usually marketed towards women, meant to suck you in in all the right places and smooth you out (laughs) in all of them, often worn under a fancy or formal outfit for a special occasion. A shapewear is good at what it does, but it's also pretty uncomfortable. My preferred day-to-day outfit looks a lot more like a pair of sweatpants, a t-shirt, and a hoodie. Maximum comfort for my work-from-home days, at least. If I have a meeting on Zoom, I might throw on a sweater or button down with my sweatpants to give the illusion of business casual. (laughs) But (laughs) why am I giving you a rundown of my wardrobe? Well, because that is what today's scripture is about. Today's scripture reading gives us a wardrobe challenge. The challenge is this. What are you dressing for? Are you properly dressed for the role and occasion in which you find yourself? Or are you wearing Spanx to lay on the couch and a sweatsuit to the ball? (laughs) Let me read you a few verses from earlier in Colossians chapter 3 and then reread the beginning of today's message, or today's passage, excuse me. Listen carefully for the wardrobe challenge. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly. You must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self which is being renewed in knowledge, according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, enslaved and free, but Christ is all in all. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. 
Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Did you hear the wardrobe challenge? The writer of this letter, either Paul or someone writing in Paul's tradition, is writing to the Christians in Colossae and reminding them that because of what Jesus has done for them in their lives, they have a new wardrobe, a wardrobe of compassion and kindness, humility, meekness, patience, and love. These are the clothes they have been given because they have a new role, living as those who have been freed from the world's chains and darkness and made new in Jesus. This is the wardrobe for following Jesus. But following Jesus isn't something we do alone. It's about living in community. So this is the wardrobe of following Jesus in community with others who are doing the same. In this, the fourth week of our series, examining the roots of our United Methodist faith and how these roots can reinvigorate us today, this scripture opens up for us a key priority and focus of our Christian faith as John Wesley understood it. Holy conferencing, sometimes called Christian conferencing. And although these terms are perhaps not as fun as the clothing metaphor in Colossians, the idea is the same. Holy conferencing is about both about what we do as a community, and it's about how we do it. You may remember that two weeks ago we talked about the power of God's grace in our lives to continually call us home, to make us right with God and transform us to be more like Jesus. Last week, we talked about becoming holy, allowing this grace to reach into every nook and cranny of our lives, into how we praise God alone and together, into how we care for people, the people we interact with every day, and how we work for the well-being of all humanity. This week with Holy Conferencing, we're talking specifically about how grace forms and shapes our relationships with one another as those who seek to follow Jesus, to be the church. As I mentioned, there is both a what and a how to this idea of Holy Conferencing, from Wesley, both from Wesley's perspective and in our scripture. So take a look with me at verse 16. The writer of the letter to the Colossians tells this early Christian community what to do. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. Clearly, the community is meant to worship together, but its life together goes beyond just singing hymns. It also includes dwelling in the word of Christ, teaching, and even admonishing one another. This is where John Wesley's emphasis on holy conferencing comes in. Wesley believed that while church uh, worship was vital to the life of the church and central to the life of the church, church wasn't just about Sunday morning worship. It was also about supporting one another to grow in faith and holding one another accountable to the practices that lead to that growth. Wesley saw this kind of supportive, accountable community being valuable at different sizes, from large gatherings to, even more importantly, small groups that gather regularly. So even to this day, there are different levels of conferencing or sizes of community in our United Methodist Church, ranging from our Tuesday morning Bible study here at TUMC to our church council, to our congregation as a whole, 
then to our annual conference, conference which encompasses 500, about 500 churches in the area. And beyond to our northeastern jurisdiction of the United States, and beyond that to the General Conference of the United Methodist Church in the world, which will be meeting for the first time since 2019 in just a few months' time. Through all these modes and sizes of community, we support each other and hold each other accountable to living as Jesus followers, as people who have received the life-changing gift of grace. That is the what. And there is also a how to this holy conferencing idea. We already started to talk about this with the wardrobe challenge from the writer of Colossians, who extols us to clothe ourselves with compassion and kindness, humility, meekness, patience, and love. Now, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I have found that Sometimes, just sometimes, it can be hard to operate in this way, to wear these clothes. Sure, being compassionate and humble and so on is no problem at all until you have to interact with other actual live human beings. Living in community, whether that community is a workplace or a town, a neighborhood, or even a church, comes with its challenges. The writer of Colossians knows this, or else he wouldn't feel the need to remind and teach the Colossian Christians about how to relate to one another. He knows that, as verse 13 says, being in community is sometimes about bearing with one another, putting up with one another in patience instead of leaving or casting the other person out. He knows that conflicts will arise and hurts and harms will occur. And so forgiveness becomes a key part of living in Christian community. Just as forgiveness is the very foundation of our relationship with God. But even though living in relationship with one another comes with its challenges, we are to always come back to the glue that holds us together. And that glue is a person, Jesus Christ, whose body we are called to be, and whose peace we are to give free reign in our hearts, when maybe we'd rather hold a grudge or get nasty with each other. When it comes to holy conferencing, these values laid out in scripture are the how. As United Methodists, we sometimes will spell them out even more explicitly and clearly as we enter into times of conferencing, which can really be any time, from a council meeting to the worldwide uh, general conference. So, for instance, Bishop Sally Dick outlined eight principles of holy conferencing, and I won't list them all, but I'll just give you a, a sense of what they're like. Remember that every person is a child of God. Treat every person as a child of God. Listen before speaking. Strive to understand from another's point of view. Pray before making decisions. It's kind of getting a little bit more practical with these big ideas of patience and meekness and humility, and putting them into actionable uh, words. Part of what makes holy conferencing or relating to others in this Christ-like way really difficult is that our world just isn't built for it. Most people would probably claim to value being kind and respectful to one another, but we see the opposite of that everywhere we go. We see anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive language, as the author of Colossians puts it. We see people getting ahead by taking others down or spreading false rumors. We see that there is power and energy in the anger of a group. And when we find ourselves slipping into these ways of interacting, we can justify it in all sorts of ways. I'm only doing this because they did it first. Because it makes me feel better in the short term. I can fix it later because the other person deserves it because it's how I know to survive in this world. Often we slip into these ways of reacting with 
rudeness or judgment or meanness without even being aware. And we more than certainly allow it to slip into the way we operate as a Christian community as well. But if we really stop to think about it, these clothes, anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive language, are really more like handcuffs or chains, keeping us bound in the prison that many forces in the world would try to keep us in. Choosing this way of relating to others keeps us at odds with one another. It keeps us divided, thinking that success is a limited resource we have to compete for, and that one person's joy can only be achieved through another's misery. The good news is that Jesus, in his living and his dying and in his overcoming death, has freed us from these chains. So why would we still choose to wear them when we have freedom's clothes to wear? There's one more piece to this idea of holy conferencing that I want to consider today. We've talked about the what, living in Christian community, the how, relating with patience and forgiveness, compassion, and so on. But what about the why? Well, it is good for us and our own souls to engage in holy conferencing together and to live in healthy Christian community. That is not the only reason to do it. Again, quoting Bishop Sally Dick, the purpose of holy conferencing is not to save the church, or the end goal isn't for the church. The church should be the workshop where we learn those practices that we can then take home, take to work, take to school, take to our communities, and use those practices elsewhere for a better life and a better world. In other words, in holy conferencing, we are practicing with other Jesus followers to go out and show the world that what we've got is something worth having, something that is good news for them too. The last verse in our scripture reading today speaks to this as well. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Having peace-filled relationships isn't just something we do with other church folk and turn it off when we leave the building. It extends to our whole lives. Many people today, especially young people, look at the church, not necessarily ours, but the church writ large, the way we interact with one another and the way we interact with non-churchgoers and think, I don't want any of that. In fact, to our shame, the way Christians treat others often looks and feels just as bad, if not worse, than the kind of vitriol, division, and hatred we see in the world. But again, the good news is that Jesus has broken our chains and given us freedom's clothes, clothes of compassion and kindness and humility and meekness and patience and love. We get to choose whether or not we wear them, or if we'd rather accessorize with the dead weight of our shackles. So friends, this week I want you to do, want to invite you to do a fit check. That is Gen Z talk, by the way, for basically looking in the mirror and taking stock of your outfit, what you're wearing, and naming each piece one by one. And it's usually recorded and put on social media, but I'm not asking you to do that. <laughs> so let us each do a spiritual fit check this week. What clothes are you choosing to wear as you connect with others each day? Are you putting on compassion, kindness, and patience? Or are you putting on rudeness and meanness and judgment? Maybe you're dressed for a spiritual Zoom call, all kindness and sweetness where other people can see, but judgment and malice underneath. You might even look in the mirror before your day begins and say aloud to yourself, today I choose to wear kindness. Today I choose to wear patience. Today I choose to remember that every person 
is a child of God. As a community, I would also invite and encourage you to join us once monthly for the next three months in an after church group where we will intentionally deepen and grow in some of these holy conferencing practices and our efforts to listen well to one another and to the surrounding community. And there is more information about this group in your announcements in the bulletin or in the e-newsletter under the heading, Do You Hear What I Hear? Let us now spend some time in reflection and prayer during our musical interlude. 